Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local, verified solar experts, community projects, and heat pump specialists in your area. And by Atmos Financial. Bank better with a financial technology company that's powered by a portfolio of clean energy investments. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolve News. Thanks for joining me. Before we get going today, and today's show is packed as per usual, a quick note that we scripted and filmed this a whole day early because, well, everyone on the team has been working our bottoms off this last month and we're taking a four-day weekend. I hope you'll forgive us if we miss a few last-minute breaking stories. Don't worry, we'll be sure to pick them up next week. We start today's show with the official starter deliveries in the US of the Chevrolet Equinox EV. While Chevy says it hopes to have two LT, three LT and three RS models at dealerships and in customers' hands by the end of this month, initial deliveries are of the two RS and two RS launch edition vehicles, models that start at $44,795 before incentives but after mandatory delivery and handling fees. Opt for an all-wheel drive variant and you'll see about 285 miles or 458 kilometers per charge, but opt for the front-wheel drive and you'll see 318 miles of EPA range, that's 511 kilometres. While we unfortunately didn't get invited to the launch event, expect a review as soon as we can beg or borrow a car. Most mainstream automakers are currently backing off their EV investments, fearing disinterest from buyers, but Honda has just done the exact opposite. At the tail end of last week, Honda announced it will double its EV investment to 10 trillion yen or 65 billion US dollars through until the end of the decade in order to remain competitive in the marketplace. While Honda's EV offerings around the world aren't exactly large yet, and its only EV on sale in North America is built on a GM platform, the firm says it wants to achieve a 5% return on EV sales investment by 2030, achieving self-sustaining status for its EV arm. As part of those plans, expect seven new models from the brand, some of which will be based on its recently released Zero Series concepts. Ahead of next month's shareholder meeting, at which Tesla shareholders will vote to reinstate Elon Musk's $55 billion remuneration package and more, Elon Musk was affirming his previous threats to remove AI and robotics from Tesla if things don't go his way. Responding to a post on X from Teslanomics, which said, quote, If Elon gets 25% voting power, Tesla is reincorporated in Texas and compensation package is approved, then AI and robotics stays within Tesla and the company can march on forward to become the largest company in the world, end quote. Elon Musk gave a single word response. Yes, suggesting yet again that if Tesla shareholders vote against Musk, he could establish a separate firm from Tesla to develop AI and robotics. Given Musk's focus of late has been on AI and robotics, and an increasing number of shareholders are growing tired of how things are being run at Tesla, next month's vote will be very interesting indeed. As we covered a few weeks ago on the show, Ford's electric division, Model E, made a sizable loss in its first quarter, and now Ford is looking to save money on its EV programs. This week, via Detroit Business, we learned that Ford has sent a memo to its suppliers asking them to help reduce costs as the Blue Oval pushes towards EV profitability. It's asking suppliers to create incremental cost reduction proposals for both in-production and future all-electric models and told suppliers, quote, we will all win or lose together, end quote. At the same time, Ford is asking dealerships to pause any EV investments 
they're making as part of a planned update to its EV dealership program, which is due later this year. Ford has basically told dealerships to pause investments until after its upcoming dealer council meeting this June. It's official. EV charging station vandalism is on the rise. According to reporting from multiple outlets, including Inside EVs, the number of stations seeing the cables cut or stolen is soaring, and it's not just anti-EV sentiment. While politically motivated attacks on charging infrastructure are still prevalent in many areas of the US, we're also now seeing thieves cutting high-power charging cables with a view to selling them on for scrap metal. There also appear to be hot spots for this kind of action, with some areas getting hit more often than others. In Houston, Texas, for example, five different Tesla supercharger sites were hit by thieves in just two weeks, causing an absolute nightmare for locals looking for a place to charge. And as is always the case, if you see a broken charging station, make sure you report it. If you leased or owned a Chevrolet Bolt EV from 2017 through until 2022, you might be eligible for compensation from a $150 million settlement against GM and LG Energy Solutions. Prior to agreeing to replace battery packs in nearly all 2017 through 19 Chevrolet Bolt EVs after a manufacturing defect was discovered that could lead to increased fire risk, GM pushed software updates to customers' cars that reduced the maximum allowable state of charge in the interests of also reducing the risk of battery fire. That in turn reduced customers' real-world ranges, and thus multiple class action lawsuits were filed. The new settlement covers multiple different class actions, and depending on if you leased or owned a Bolt EV that got the update, you could get up to $1,400 per car. We're going to dig for more information on this one, so watch this space. Renault will officially open the order books in some European markets next week for the first two variants of its Renault 5 E-Tech electric hot hatch. Ultimately, the retro-inspired electric hatch will be offered with five different trim options, encompassing two different battery packs and three motor configurations. But the two variants due to go on sale at launch, which will start from €32,900, will feature the larger 52kWh battery pack. A more affordable model with a 40kWh battery pack will follow next year, but exactly what features your car have will depend on where you live. At launch, for example, Spanish and French customers will get full V2G capabilities from their cars, but those in Germany will not for now, getting a V2L instead. Battery degradation, a measurement of how battery packs lose their ability to store energy over time, has long been a concern of first-time EV buyers. And long-time EV enthusiasts will tell you that battery degradation tends to be pretty fast in the first few years of ownership before dramatically easing off. Now data from Recurrent backs that up perfectly. It has been monitoring the range when full of more than 12,000 Tesla Model 3 and Model Y cars over the last few years, and it's found that during the first 1,000 days of their lives, these two Tesla models range per charge drop to about 64% of their stated EPA range on average before then stabilizing. That makes for scary headlines, but it's super important to note that this data compares to the Tesla EPA ratings, which are frankly kind of overly optimistic. And even when new, most Teslas only manage about 70% of stated EPA range in the real world. Volvo's EX30 is already proving itself very popular in its launch market in Europe, with the EX30 partly responsible for Volvo's strong EV sales of late. And ahead of the car's launch in North America, it's just launched in China as a direct competitor to some of BYD's current lineup. Priced from 200800 one, which is just shy of 28,000 US dollars. 
the Volvo EX30 will be available with a choice of four different variants. With its longest range version, the EX30 all-wheel drive high performance ultra coming in at almost the exact same price as Volvo will charge in the US for the entry-level EX30 when it goes on sale here later this summer. Expect more markets to get this very popular crossover by the end of the year. One car that might not come to your market before year's end, though, is the Volkswagen ID7, at least if you live outside of Europe. That's because this week, Volkswagen confirmed that it will delay the launch of the ID7 in North America, citing changing market dynamics and a stronger than expected demand in its home market of Germany. According to the firm, the ID7 Tourer, the wagon variant of the full-size car, is proving very popular with buyers. So popular, in fact, that Volkswagen has decided to focus on fulfilling demand in Europe before launching elsewhere. Volkswagen's always been slow to launch electric models in other markets, but it has reiterated that it remains committed to launching the ID Buzz long wheelbase in the US this year, as previously planned. Our short shorts are next, but first a word from a longtime friend of the channel, Energy Sage. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local, verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing solar panels, help you join a community solar program, or get a heat pump installed. I used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. Follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free, no obligation services and get that ball rolling today. If you choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will also get a small referral fee, so you'll be helping us out too. Help the grid get greener and save money? It's a win win. And now it's time for short shorts, and we're going to start with a quartet of recalls. GM has recalled a small number of Ultium-based EVs to address a small number of drive motors built in Ultium-based models with insufficient insulation on their motor windings. GM will replace the motors in affected cars free of charge. Rivian has issued a recall for R1T and R1S models after it was discovered that some are missing the mandatory dashboard warning airbag label as required under federal motor vehicle safety standards. Owners will be notified. Mercedes-Benz has recalled some EQB models in the US to address an incorrectly welded drivetrain spur gear on the front axle. A drivetrain fault which, if it fails, can result in a vehicle rolling away. The remedy involves replacing the entire front axle electric drivetrain. And finally, for the recalls, four Kia EV9 models have been recalled to address a faulty seat belt retractor that does not operate as designed in the event of a crash, increasing the risk of injury to the front seat passenger. Owners will be notified of the recall by June 5th. A joint partnership between Renault and Volkswagen that was meant to lead to a future Twingo-sized EV has fallen through. Now, reporting from Reuters suggests that the partnership has ended and both companies will work independently. Neither firm has confirmed the reporting. Italian fiscal police have confiscated 134 Fiat Topolino cars imported to the country because of a small Italian flag on the vehicle. While Fiat is part of Stellantis and the Topolino is built on a joint platform, authorities were upset the cars weren't made in Italy and thus could not have the Italian flag. Trajectory EV has announced it's building an adapter kit that will allow first-generation Toyota RAV4 EVs to make use of modern J1772 and Tesla destination charging infrastructure. Costing just under $2,500, it promises to keep these classics on the road and charging. 
Battery specialist CATL has begun to look for new locations to establish battery production facilities outside of China. As reported this week, CATL, the world's largest battery maker with nearly 37% of the market share, hopes to establish at least two overseas production facilities. Volvo Construction Equipment has just unveiled two new charging solutions, the PU-130 and PU-750, as part of a collaboration with Utility Innovation Group. The two units consist of portable batteries and fast charging stations to enable electric construction equipment to be quickly charged on construction sites, even if power isn't readily available. Sticking with charging, ChargePoint has announced that it will now offer MCS megawatt charging capability on its PowerLink 2000 charging stations, meaning heavy-duty big rigs will be able to eventually charge up at power levels of up to 3 megawatts. The U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has opened a recall query for certain Volkswagen ID.4 electric crossovers after it received 12 different complaints from customers whose doors opened while driving, despite having previous door handle-related recalls. New reporting from Bloomberg suggests that some Chinese automakers are a little slow to pay outstanding bills. It claims that while Tesla usually takes around 100 days to pay its bills, Xpeng and Neo are taking between two and three times longer to do the same. Tesla has removed Steam game functionality from new Model S and X, telling buyers that an update to the gaming computer inside those vehicles are no longer capable of playing Steam games. I wonder if Tesla has dropped NVIDIA chipsets and has perhaps gone in-house instead. Although Volkswagen's workers at an EV production facility in Tennessee recently voted to become a union shop, workers at Mercedes-Benz's EV production facility in Alabama have just voted against doing so. Unlike the Volkswagen vote, which was overwhelming, the Mercedes-Benz unionization vote was fairly evenly split down the middle. China's first major sodium-ion battery energy storage facility is now operational and, according to state-owned China Southern Power Grid, can charge from empty to 90% full in just 12 minutes. The grid-tied facility can store 10 megawatt hours of energy. Commercial truck rivals Volvo Group and Daimler Truck have announced their intent to work together to form a joint venture focused on building a software-defined vehicle platform to, quote, amplify digital transformation, end quote. It will feature heavily in future EVs if it becomes a reality. Volvo Construction Equipment has just published its first round of carbon footprint records for all of its electric construction equipment. Covering the full life cycle of its products, it aims to make it easier for customers to calculate their total carbon reductions of going all electric. Daimler Trucks North America has confirmed that it plans to invest more than 40 million US dollars in a brand new electric vehicle engineering facility at its headquarters in Portland, Oregon. Already home to its US market electric big rigs, the investment will be good news for the area. Less than a month after it introduced the refreshed Model 3 performance in the US, Tesla has put prices up for the same for the second time. The sportiest Tesla Model 3 you can buy is now $2,000 more expensive than when it was launched. Acura has confirmed that its ZDX Type S, which shares a lot of its underpinnings with the Honda Prologue and is built on the GM Ultium platform, has been chosen as the official pace car for this summer's International Pikes Peak Hill Climb. This is the very first time an EV has carried out that duty. Tesla is reportedly looking to establish a new data center in China, where it plans to train its self-driving AI. While Tesla offers full self-driving supervised in some markets, China has not yet given the go-ahead for Tesla to deploy it there. Caterpillar, working alongside mining company Vale, will test Caterpillar's massive 242-ton electric mining truck, the CAT-793, at one of its facilities in Brazil. In addition, the two companies are continuing their partnership on dual fuel for existing ICE vehicles.
Tesla has started pushing an over-the-air software update to customers' cars that removes the autopilot steering wheel nag. However, in order to prevent the car from actually nagging you, customers can't be wearing sunglasses or hats to enable the car's in-car cameras to monitor their eye movements instead. J.D. Power's latest U.S. electric vehicle consideration study shows that for the first time since the firm began studying attitudes towards EVs three years ago, there's a decline in interest in electric vehicles. One of the primary cited reasons for lowering interest was affordability of models. Jeep has released a teaser video on YouTube for its upcoming Wagoneer S. Due to launch later this year as the first electric Jeep to go on sale in North America, the brand is eager to point out that it's got a 3.4 second sprint time and cross shops against the Tesla Model Y. Gravity has announced a new charging station setup designed exclusively for on-street fast charging of EVs. Called the Deep Tree, short for Distributed Energy Access Points, it features a pole, high-powered 2 or 500 kilowatt charging station, and a movable arm to allow cables to safely reach charge port doors wherever they are on the car. Jaguar Land Rover has confirmed that it signed a deal with Fortescue to use the firm's Elisa battery intelligence software in its next generation of electric vehicles. The Elisa software, which we covered on this channel last year, helps ensure maximum health of the battery pack at all times. Mercedes-Benz Trucks has announced a new partnership with Alpitronic that allows commercial heavy-duty vehicle customers in Europe to buy an Alpitronic high-power fast-charging station at the very same time they buy a brand-new electric truck for their fleet. EVgo has just announced it's got more than 1 million registered users on its network, more than double the number of accounts it had active on the network in October 2022. In fact, customer accounts have increased by 400% since April 2020. Hertz doesn't have the best reputation with customer service. And this week we learned at the start of the month, a Hertz location tried to charge someone nearly 300 US dollars to fill up the gasoline tank of their Tesla Model 3 they'd hired. Hertz has since refunded the customer. A new poll from Auto Pacific shows that customers in the US have differing impressions of Chinese EVs depending on their age. Overall, only 36% of respondents said they were open to a Chinese-made EV, but 76% of those under the age of 40 were open to the idea. Xpeng published its first quarter results this week, showing a marked decrease in deliveries compared to Q4 last year, but also a dramatic increase in revenue from sales and a massive improvement in quarterly losses. The firm's Q1 losses sat at 190 million US dollars. As it ramps up production of its electric vehicles, Daimler Truck North America has published details of its Second Life program for commercial vehicle battery packs. It's partnered with Nuvation Energy and Lifecycle to provide second life and recycling options, respectively. Hyundai's luxury brand, Genesis, is looking to build at least 21,000 Genesis GV90s per year after the model goes on sale. It'll be based on the eGMP platform and will basically be an upmarket variant of the Kia EV9 with Genesis Luxury. Chinese brand Zika is rumoured to be looking to cash in on the demand for estate cars or wagons in some markets and is thus working on a wagon variant of its 007 electric sedan. There's no official news on when the vehicle will due to be relaunched. And finally, for the short shorts, sister brand to Zika and Volvo, Polestar, has been threatened with delisting by the Nasdaq Stock Exchange in the US. The reason? It failed to submit and publish its 2023 annual fiscal report. It has 60 days to submit an action plan to NASDAQ or else. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Our final two stories are next, but first, a quick word from one of today's video sponsors, Atmos Financial. Imagine a bank where your savings not only grow, but also go towards growing a greener world. That is exactly what Atmos Financial does for you. 
With Atmos, every dollar in your checking and savings account is funding projects that light up lives with solar energy rather than fossil fuels. Atmos is banking that builds a better tomorrow with every swipe of your card today because it's committed to investing 100% in clean, equitable and sustainable progress. There's a 3.5% savings rate and a mobile app, meaning that your finances and the climate can go hand in hand. It charges no monthly fees and there are no minimums keeping you awake at night. It offers accessible solar loans for those who want to give the fossil fuel industry the ultimate middle finger. So by joining Atmos using the link below, you're not only choosing a smarter way to bank, you're planting seeds for a healthier earth. And since every sign up supports this channel, it means that we can keep bringing you the content you love. I'm a customer and I love knowing that I'm helping save money while also making sure that my savings doesn't fund the fossil fuel industry. And now it's time for those last two stories. When Tesla launched its Cybertruck, it shared a video at the handover event for first customer deliveries that showed a Cybertruck racing a Porsche 911 while also towing a Porsche 911. During the event, Elon Musk stated the Cybertruck could tow a Porsche 911 across a quarter mile faster than a Porsche 911 driving itself, a statement that grabbed an awful lot of headlines. However, it didn't take too long for people to note Tesla's video only seemed to cover an eighth of a mile and that the physics of said claim just didn't add up. Engineering Explained made some great videos on the topic, and this week the channel, working alongside Motor Trend, debunked Tesla's claims with all of the data double checked and all the numbers tallied up. The too long didn't read here is that over a quarter mile, even with the slowest Porsche 911 on sale today, the Porsche won every time. Even over half the distance, the Porsche won most of the runs against the Cybertruck, towing a Porsche 911. That said, the Cybertruck, even if it's not Porsche beating in that particular scenario, is still blisteringly quick for a pickup. And finally, traditionally, the largest consumer of electricity in the transportation sector in the US has been public transit, with light rail and commuter rail using the largest amount of electricity. But last year, the combined electricity consumption of all of the light duty electric vehicles in the US, that includes electric motorcycles, cars and trucks, was higher than the total electrical consumption of the rail industry. And that's according to the US Energy Information Administration, which states that on average, rail uses seven megawatt hours of electricity per year, which compared to most countries is tiny. Until you remember that most US passenger trains are still powered by fossil fuels. Last year, the total grid consumption of light duty EVs rose to 7.596 megawatt hours, eclipsing rail's consumption. It shows EVs are on the rise, but honestly, we'd like to see more electric trains everywhere. And on that note, we are in fact done with today's show. As always, a massive thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring the show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. Find out more by heading to myeva.org. And thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency through solar on the roof of your home, joining a community solar program, or by getting a heat pump installed. And thanks to Atmos Financial. Bank better by following the link below. As usual, we would love it if you'd consider supporting us from $1 a month on Patreon or about $10.08 a year we choose to operate a primarily viewer-supported model as it allows us to keep editorial impartiality while simultaneously ensuring our output is free for everyone to consume. That said, without support from those who can, we wouldn't be able to keep doing what we do. So if you already support, thank you. And if you don't yet, 
please consider it. If everyone who watched supported us at $10.08 a year, we'd be able to do so much more. And if you watched our Chevrolet Silverado EV work truck review earlier this month, it was actually paid for by your kind donations because Chevy doesn't lend anybody a work truck to review. So thank you. And if Patreon isn't your thing, check out our swag store where there's a new design for the month of May. It, along with the rest of our designs, is there for your swag related needs. And of course, we will be back next week with usual with content going out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Although the schedule next week is slightly different because we've got two first drives that are going to be published slightly early due to embargoes lifting. To finish, remember that you are valid and loved. You have a place in this world, even if lawmakers, pundits and talking heads want you not to exist or want to restrict your rights. This year, frankly, has seen so many rights get eroded and sometimes it can be pretty hard to keep on keeping on, but know that your existence is resistance. And even if you're not affected by eroding rights, just please remember to register to vote and get involved in your local political scene. Have your say, whatever it is, because that's part of the democratic process. So until next time, stay safe, regardless of your identity or who you love, be an amazing ally, be kind, and please, for the sake of everyone's future, keep evolving.